Hey, what's up everybody? It's Timothy here. Um, before I pick this Emrakul, I want to apologize, A, for not having a video up last week. We kind of had a hurricane uh, <laughs> go through North Carolina, and um, it didn't really affect my area that well, so I don't, or that well, uh, that hard, so don't worry about that, but uh, it did mean there was some preparation and stuff to do, and work got pretty busy. Uh, I work at a lodge right now, so a lot of evacuees from the coast had to come in, but... Um, anyway, enough about that. We are going to play some Legacy Cube here, and I have a certain philosophy. Um, don't pass Emrakul in these cubes. I think there's a lot less, fewer ways to uh, cheat Emrakul into play in this cube, but there is still sneak attack. There might be show and tell, stuff like that. And um, Otherwise, there wasn't really anything that stood out in that pack. This is Liliana the Last Hope. I like Hostage Taker. Um, nothing here that really goes with my first pick, unfortunately, unless I want a Primal Command for it, but I don't really love Primal Command. Um, Battery Saver Mode, why thank you, PC. Uh, I could take just like a Braid or, I don't know, like a Control Card like Day of Judgment. Hostage Shaker's good, like I said. Might just take the Removal spell. I'm looking for a Sneak Attack, really. I'll take Hostage Shaker. I'll take Hostage of Hostage Taker. Um, Explore's nice. Lightning Greaves is fine. I do like the fetches, but I like to at least have an idea of what colors I'm in before I take the fetches. Ooh, Tatiova's in the cube. Sky Sovereign's good against some decks. Bad against others. Explore. Do I want to just take Explore? I don't think I'm ramping into Emrakul. Hey, if Emrakul doesn't work out, then I'm fine with that. Could take Night Bell Spectre. It goes with Hostage Taker pretty nicely. Tassigur I don't actually like very much. Yeah, I might just take Night Vale Spectre. If I end up blue-black control, I'm pretty happy with that too. Dark Confidant, I do not like to play in cubes. It just kills the man. Um, Inquisition or Spell Queller. I've never had a lot of success with Malicious Affliction. It kills a black creature, or a non-black creature. And then uh, if a creature's already died that turn, you get to kill two non-black creatures. It might take Spell Queller and just be like Esper Control or something like that. History seems fine. Wrath of God is fine. Greater Gargadon is good in some decks. Lightning Helix Repeal. These are both good cards. If I wanted to stay on color with uh, these two cards, I would just take Repeal. But I think Spell Color is pretty good. Quell some spells. Uh, here's a Drowd Catacomb, a Hymn of Turarch, and a Thirst for Knowledge. I'm really tempted to take the Hymn here. Hymn is sweet, but you really do need mana fixing in these sort of decks, especially if I'm going to end up Esper. I need to prioritize mana fixing very highly. I'm going to take him, though. Ooh, a Phyrexian Obliterator. Maybe we transition into Mono Black here. I do like Mono Black. It's my favorite thing to draft in this cube, but you have to open the right cards for it. I'm going to do it. I love me some Mono Black. So you're looking for A, this card, um, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, Giraffe's Messenger, Nykthos, things like that. Things that pay you off for being mono black. Here, I don't think Reanimator's where I want to be. This isn't even something that can combo with Emrakul, so I'll probably just take Freebooter. I'm not really impressed with a lot of other stuff in this pack anyway. It is interesting to see some of the cards that have made it into the cube now, though. Ooh, Shieldred I do like. And this Garrick I don't like, so that's pretty easy Shieldred, I think. Could be Reanimator. I didn't take Exhum, and uh, I don't think there's enough cards in that pack for it to come back. But that's fine. Graveyard Marshal fits what we're doing just fine here. Just fine. Gifts Ungiven works in a Reanimator strategy, as does Careful Study. But I'll take Graveyard Marshal. Right, I'll take this Liliana. Underworld Connections I think is fine, too. Let's see how Mono Black works out. Um, do I want Underworld Connections? Do I want Liliana? I think I just want Liliana. Especially if I end up with some reanimation. Alright, so Bloodstained Mire. These are all possibilities here. Lightning Greaves I think is the least likely. I'm tempted to take Duress. Don't think I love Tassiger here. And Sky Sovereign's just fine, but Monoblock usually has a bunch of removal. I'll take Duress. I do mainboard duress in these sorts of decks. Malicious Affliction looking a little bit better now. And Dark Confidant is fine, but Dark Confidant always kills me when I play it, so I'm not in love with it. Uh, Vampire Hex Mage is okay. Kills Planeswalkers at the very least. And we're not playing any of this other crap here. Alright, so we've got the shell of a mono black deck. We could 
put some blue cards in or some white cards. Well, I guess we can't play this in mono black, but it works. Let's see. So I do like the swords in this cube. I think they're quite good. Um, Fire and Ice, I think, is just way better than Body and Mind. Also, a lot of the mono black cards are probably going to come back. Liliana has a good chance of coming back. If Makeshift Mannequin doesn't come back, that means somebody else is probably in Reanimator. And we can kind of stay out of that. Snapcaster would be great. Relic is fine, but not awesome. Uh, I'm probably just going to take Sword of Fire and Ice here. Just suit up your creatures, deal a lot of damage, draw cards. Gives you card advantage, which black doesn't always have. Um, we have Gifted Aetherborn or Dread Return. Hmm. I like Magister of Worth, too. It's a pretty neat card. Ooh, sort of Feast and Famine as well. Don't think I want more than, like, two swords. Also, good chance I get one of these back. So, yeah, I'll take Sword of Feast and Famine. Don't need to prioritize any other swords. Damnation's pretty good, and I might get Read the Bones back. Or Wretched Confluence, which I like both of. So, Damnation's a nice one to have here. Lear is alright. Doomblade's fine, but not amazing. Distended Mindbender, I think, is fantastic. So, I'll go ahead and take that. If you don't remember this one, it's a, it has a merge. It's basically a black card, although you could cast it in non-black decks. And you get to snipe two cards out of your opponent's hands most of the time. Also, it's not even really an 8-drop. Ooh, Erebos is one of the payoffs for being mono-black. And I already have Damnation, so I don't think Crux of Fate is really what I need here. But I think Erebos is going to be quite good in our deck. 5-7 Indestructible. Massacre Worm also just destroys a lot of the decks in this format. If that wasn't here, I'd consider Ultimate Prize, Spell Skites. Bowmat Courier is not making the cuts. I do like me a Massacre Worm, though. We really want Nykthos. Ooh, Animate Dead. I think Animate Dead's got to be good for us, right? Um, I don't have discard outlets at the moment, so it's not like I'm really a reanimator strategy. I can't really pitch Shieldred or Massacre Worm. Um, I don't think I have any way to discard at the moment. I can mill myself with Liliana, which is something. Graveyard Marshal isn't really a reanimator card. It's like the antithesis of a reanimator card. Ooh, there we go. I can him to Turok myself. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take Animate Dead. This can also just steal your opponent's creatures, so... It's fine. Tetsamok. I don't think Tetsamok's amazing in this cube. It might be good. So, Godless Shrine or Murder's Cut? Hmm. Uh, tough pick, tough pick. Godless Shrine could open up some possibilities here, but currently we don't have anything. Like, could let me play Windbrisk Kites or something like that. Um, or that Vindicate if it come back comes back around. I think I'd just take Murder's Cut, though. Yep, Liliana. This Soren I don't think is great. Could take Makeshift Mannequin, too. Uh, this Liliana is actually pretty good discard outlet. Also, it's pretty good with, like, Vampire Hex Mage, where I can just sack it and flip it right away. You have to have a creature die in order for this Liliana to matter. Makeshift Mannequin doesn't add to our Black Devotion, which matters for one card right now. But it is a reanimation spell, although I already have Animate Dead. I'll just take this Liliana. We'll go Lily Tribal. Yeah, both of these cards came back. I'm tempted to take Gifted Aetherborn over Dread Return. Dread Return's just another reanimation spell. Um, flashback doesn't matter so much in our deck. I'll take Gifty Boy. And Read the Bones is fine. Doomblade is fine. Uh, none of these are fine. Where are all my fine cards? Take Rabble Boy. Take, yeah, I'll take this thing. And, ooh, Bone Shredder, last pick. Nice. Alright, so we've already got 23 playables here. Some of them aren't great, like Doomblade and Malicious Aff Affliction are going to be just bad main deck options against some amount of decks. I'd prefer to have, like, Ultimate Price or um, go for the throat, one of the uh, more generic ones, but I guess Doomblade hits just about as many targets as those do. Um, we're really looking for Grey Merchant of Asphodel and Nykthos. I don't know if Soren Markov's in this cube anymore or not. I don't think it is, but I wouldn't mind that. Here's a Pack Rat. That's a discard outlet and a decent card. Phyrexian Metamorph's nice. Volrath Stronghold could be a card that wheels for us. I don't know how many decks are interested in this. I uh, don't really want Battle Sphere, Oblivion Stone. I like having at least one reset button in my decks, but um, I already have Damnation, so I don't care too much about having Oblivion Stone. Probably just take Pack Rat and hope to wheel the Volrath Stronghold or the Phyrexian Metamorph, although I don't think... I should uh, 
bank on the Metamorph coming back. A lot of not amazing cards like Silver, Paladin, Green Sun Zenith, Dim Dismissive Pyromancer, Needle Spires. These are cards that some, you know, amount of people aren't necessarily going to care about. Entomb, huh? Or Shriek Maw. Entomb, fetch something up, put it in the graveyard. But I only have, like, what, two reanimation spells at the moment? I didn't even take Makeshift Mannequin. Actually, it didn't wheel, which was something I said to watch out for. I do have Animate Dead. Um, I thought I picked up another reanimation spell. I guess not. Shieldred is technically reanimation, but we're going to have to cast that the hard way. I think I'm supposed to take Shriek Maul here and hope to get in Tomb back. Again, we're hoping not to play against black decks. <laughs> Here's a big Emrakul. Ooh, Kokosho. I do like Kokosho. I guess this is small Emrakul, actually. Every time I draft Emrakul and I try to put it in a deck, I can never cast it. Oh, there's Nykthos, too. Uh, that's kind of a tough pick because I really like Kokosho, but Nykthos might not come back if there's, like, another mono green drafter, so I'm just going to take Nykthos. Uh, there's Giralf's Messenger. Great with Nykthos. Wouldn't mind Duplicant here. Don't need City of Brass or Underground Sea for anything, so easy Giralf's Messenger. I might be able to wheel a lot of these cards I'm taking. Ooh, Thought Seize, Ravenous Chupacabra. I'm going to take Choops. Choops is just good. It's probably the best version of this effect that you can get. I think it's better than Shriek Maul, even though Shriek Maul has Evoke. Uh, I don't even know if Necrotal is still in the cube or not, since they just keep printing better versions of this effect. Bone Shredder being another one. Uh, Shriek Maw is basically a two-drop. We're going to have to cut a lot of cards. Gaunti's a cool card. Chainer's Edict might be better. Um, I'm going to take Gaunti. Gaunti's sweet. I'm going to have to cut a lot of cards, too. Dark Petition, Phyrexian Arena. Phyrexian Arena could give me some really good card draw that I don't necessarily otherwise have. Dark Petition tutors, but I don't really know how important it is that I need to tutor, and I don't think Spell Mastery is going to be on that often. So, Arena it is. Hero's Downfall. Oh, there's Necrotal. I guess that answers that question. Um, Necrotal. I really don't feel like I need Necrotal when I have Bone Shredder, Ravenous Chupacabra, and Shriek Maw. I have, like, all of the Necrotal effects. I'm just missing Skin Render. I'll take Hero's Downfall. Kills Planeswalkers. We did get Volrath Stronghold back, and I will definitely go and take this here. Put a creature back on top of your library. Can let you cycle your Shriek Maws, kill a bunch of things, or something like that. Seems great here. Did not get Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which kind of sucks, unfortunately. But uh, We got most of the mono black things you want. Nykthos, Erebos, um, Phyrexian Obliterator. So, yeah. But, unfortunately, no... Uh... No Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Sure. If this was a real draft, like, draft, if I knew I was playing against those people, I would snap up that uh, Mirror and Crusader. <laughs> Anything with Pro Black is just going to destroy us. We're going to lose to Karmic Guide. Alright, so I don't think I'm playing both these swords. I think Feast and Famine is better than Fire and Ice, so I'll go ahead and take that. Actually, Fire and Ice might be better than Feast and Famine. But I'm not 100% sure. It depends on how much I have to do with my mana. Uh, I'm going to cut Bone Shredder due to Shriekmon, which we call it. Ooh, Chainer's Edict seems fine. Some decks that Chainer's Edict's really bad against, but seems fine. Could cut Massacre Worm until I know I'm against a deck where Massacre Worm is good. Like, great sideboard card. Could just randomly get somebody, but if my opponent's playing control and they only have like two or three big fatties in their deck, then Massacre Worm starts to look really bad. So, put my lands off to the side, probably forget about them. That leaves me with six cuts. That's a lot of cuts, man. So many cuts. Alright, let me just go through real quick and see what stands out as something I'm not necessarily excited to play right away. Uh, Malicious Affliction. Uh, I guess Vampire Hex Mage. Read the Bones is just fine. This Liliana seems okay. It's probably a lot better against... Uh, I'm not really into the whole mill myself type thing. Um, could be fine, right? But I'm not really Reanimator. I just happen to have an Animate Dead and a Shieldred. Um, Erebos, Damnation. I guess Gaunti can probably go. Gaunti's cool, but I don't necessarily know that putting Gaunti in my deck is going to increase the odds of me winning a game. Um, 
it's a good little roadblock against creature decks, like against the white decks and stuff like that, because a death touch gives you card advantage. I think I'm going to keep Phyrexian Arena. Yeah, I think Vampire Hexmage is going to go here. I think I'm going to have enough Devotion to Black, even if I cut, like, everything that Nykthos is still going to be good in my deck. Duress could probably go. If that was Thoughtseize, I would just straight up mainboard it. And then I need to cut one more card here. What would you guys cut? What's not good? Kokosho? Kokosho seems good. Um, I like the Ravenous Chupacabra Shriek Maul. I like Erebos here. I guess read the pawns. A little bit on the slow side for a cube. Chainer's Edict could be really bad too against like any sort of token strategy. Alright, so we'll go ahead and cut like this. Um, 15 Swamps. Pretty easy. Anything else that I'm missing here? I always seem to miss something in my sideboard. Like, I played against Reanimator earlier and just forgot to board in Relic of Progenitus. It was pretty embarrassing. It felt bad. Islands. They're like, you need islands to cast your Night Vale Spectre. Why don't you put two islands in your deck, Tim? Anyway. Mono Black it is. Favorite archetype in the format. Not necessarily sure that it's the best archetype. But, uh, yeah, there we go. And uh, we first picked an Emrakul, by the way. Don't think I have any way to get that back in a meaningful manner. You need instant speed animation, and I don't think I saw any. So, yeah. Oh, we didn't get that Entomb back. Not that I really even want to play Entomb here, but... Sure. We got good sideboard plan, tokens, um, mid-range, and then Planeswalkers. We've got some stuff to kill Planeswalkers. Yeah, we've got... All of these are like good sideboard cards in different situations, so kind of like where we're at. But we're going to play Mono Black. I'm Timothy with Mana Rocks. Thanks for joining me for this draft. I'll see you in round one of the Legacy Cube draft. All right, here we are for round one against DJ Blindside 83. I wonder how old he is. Um, I'm going to keep this hand because of the Phyrexian Arena, but I don't have a lot of confidence in it, to be honest. Sort of Feast and Famine not looking very good. Also gives Pro Black protection from my own cards. I read the bones is not what I wanted to draw when I already have Phyrex in Arena, but it's fine. Also, I just always assume that I'm going to play against a blue deck, because that's all anybody ever drafts in cube. So, <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and get our stuff countered a little bit. We'll lose to some Planeswalkers. That's kind of how this goes. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and sit here and not do anything for a while. Tons of two drops in my deck, unfortunately not drawing any of them, but it's fine. Sword of Feast and Famine also not looking very good, but keep in mind I have Sword of Fire and Ice, which we can easily just swap swords here. I don't think my deck necessarily wants two of them. We'll just play whichever one's good. I'm just going to jam something into a Counterspell. Ooh, I could actually him. That would have been amazing last turn. I think I'm going to play Phyrexian Arena first and then save a him. If they want to counter this, then I'm not going to uh, quabble, quabble over it. I'm not going to quabble. That's the word that came out of my mouth, quabble. Yep, they, they can counter Phyrexian Arena. Nimble Obstructionist. Oh, they're just straight up casting that? Okay. Don't know why people feel it necessary to do things in response to other things if it doesn't interact with it, but I kind of get it. This is going to beat me down. And a Johnny? All right, well, let's <laughs> draw something, please. We've got good removal. It only takes, like, a Ravenous Chupacabra or something like that to kind of make this even. Phyrexian Arena. We're going to go down to 15 this turn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gifted Aetherborn's okay. Um, I can go him plus e Aetherborn, I suppose. Take six next turn. Still just hoping to draw into something. Could read the bones here too, but I'm going to go ahead and just him them real quick. They're playing like a blue-white tempo game, I suppose. Oh, they're going to Force of Will, Pitch, and Dismiss. Okay, I guess it's better to force some cards you don't want than it is to uh, just randomly discard some cards you might want. They also just pitch two counter spells, so I'm not feeling very good about this match. If they're going to play Dismiss, Force of Will. Uh, it's good to know about the Force of Will. Like, we're probably just going to lose this game in two turns. Take six, then seven. Yeah, we're going to take six, then seven... Unless we draw something right away and we cast Read the Bones, we lose two life. So, eh, I'm not feeling too great about it. And this gives me a little bit of life. If I can stick the Sword of Feast and Famine on it, then, you know, I'm gaining four life back, which is something. 
Johnny needs to be at what to ult? Yeah, they're just holding up counter spells too. Ugh, that's gross. Um, no creature to get back with Animate Dead. This draw has not worked out, has it? I'm gonna go Sword of Feast and Famine and hope to gain some life here. Two cards in hand and they didn't play anything. Pro green, pro black. What you gonna do about that? Suppose I'm supposed to attack a Johnny here. Um, deals combat damage to a player. Let's see, if I attack them and I untap, I get to read the bones. That puts me up to 13, but then down to 11. They attack me for 6 down to 5. I go down to 4 with this. Um, I feel like I need to draw into something here so i am gonna go for that plan and if i die i die it's okay let's see what they got here they could just flash in a creature or something like that plenty of flash creatures they could have avison would be pretty gross because the indestructible but i'm gonna wait to see what dj blindside wants to do here Having this out on turn two would have been amazing. Actually, having the him would have been good too. Just something to do on turn two. Alright, I'm attacking you. What you doing there? This can't hit Planeswalkers. Alright, looks like I'm going to get the hidden, which is cool. Go and untap. Oh, opponent has to discard too, which is relevant for Sword of Feast and Famine. Wasteland. Not good against me. Probably going to take that out, I imagine. Read the bones. And nothing to animate dead, which is problematic as well. But the Scry 2 is super relevant here. Because I do need to kill both of these, I think. Uh, Shriek Maul is perfect. Oh, and I can even evoke Shriek Maul right now. So we'll go bottom, top, draw 2, and evoke Shriek Maul right away. Freebooter could get that last card out of hand, but... Shriek Maul seems perfect, as long as that last spell isn't a counter spell. They didn't fight over this, but they might be thinking that they can beat what I have right now. So hopefully they don't have an answer to Shriek Maul. If they do and I survive next turn, I can animate dead Shriek Maul and then go for this again to kill this. Because the Johnny's not too big of a threat. It doesn't have anything to return. Putting counters on things doesn't matter too much. But if this works, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. Freebooter takes spells out of my opponent's hand. They have one card in hand. It doesn't seem like it interacts very well. And we just got the big threat off board, plus I'm drawing two per turn. Could even animate dead the bird if I want to. Hmm. That's pretty good. Let me grab a charger real quick so we don't lose the thing. Alright, that's the sound of me clamoring for a uh, um charger. But we're back. So, this could go bad. I do still need to find a way to kill a Johnny here. I think I'm going to have to Shriek Maul this and just let him have my Gifted Aetherborn. But I can move the sword off of it. So I think that's fine. Let's see what we draw first. If we draw like a Hero's Downfall or something, I might just wait. But opponent is empty-handed here. I don't really want to give him Gifted Aetherborn, but worse things have happened. Especially since a lot of my creatures don't actually kill Gifted Aetherborn. I don't want him pumping it up with this. Alright, land, land. Not great. So, kill Kaiga or not to kill Kaiga? Animate Dead isn't the one you could cast as an instant, right? No. I suppose what I could do here is um, just attack a Johnny. They probably block. Yeah, they probably block and take Gifted Aetherborn rather than letting this take four. Oh, that's going to ult next turn. That's very bad. How do I stop that? I don't think I can stop this from ulting. You get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step, create three one one white cats. I can't stop that, can I? I thought that ulted on eight, not seven. Oh boy, that's bad. That's real bad. Because if I kill Kaiga, they just take Gifted Aetherborn. Then how do I beat a cat army? 
All right, I think I'm supposed to trade. Let them take... Oh, no, they would trade in combat, so they might not even block. All right, well, I'm going to attack this. And then I think reanimate. I don't even know. This is going to be bad. I don't know if we can race an army of 1-1 one, one <laughs> cats. I'm going to attack a Johnny, though. Either they take it, or, um, which I'd be fine with them taking it, or they block, they don't get to take anything with Kaiga. Alright, they are going to block, they're going to go for the ult here. Alright, so my best bet might be to just reanimate Kaiga and try to beat them down. Um, I can animate Kaiga plus play Freebooter. These things have lifelink too, that's so gross. Alright, Volrath Stronghold on top. I think I should wait on Freebooter. Alright, let's just get Kaiga back here. Oh, how am I going to beat this? You get an emblem at the beginning of your end step. So they get them right away. Oh, that's going to be gross. Forgot this gets minus one, minus O as well. Do I want a Volrath Stronghold, like, gifted Aetherborn to the top of my deck? Probably not, right? Great, I'm going to draw two cards. I think I just want fresh draws here. Alright, bring it on, cats. Alright, ooh, Coca Show's good. Coca Show goes a long way here, as does Liliana. So, I have 7 mana. I'm gonna play Coca Show first. Actually, maybe I should go Freebooter plus Liliana and then just play Coca Show second main. Since I'm going to get to untap, Freebooter kind of clears the way here. See what their last card is. Not a counter spell, otherwise they'd probably just counter Kite Sail Freebooter, I assume. Hopefully they didn't top deck a removal spell for Kaiga, or a bounce spell would be very bad. Condemn. Alright, we get to take that, which is great. Otherwise they get to condemn their Kaiga. Uh huh. And then let's go ahead and play Liliana. Oh no, I need to equip, don't I? Yeah. Oh no, I still have enough for Liliana, don't I? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> oh, that gives Pro Black. It bops, pops a uh, anime dead off. That's so bad. Oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> oh no, I forgot about that. So I put the sword on, It get, sword gives protection from black, which means it can't be enchanted by black enchantments, and my dead falls off. Oh my god, that's so bad. <laughs> Whenever a non-token creature... Alright. Ooh, that... All right, all right, all right. I made a mistake. Don't don't yell at me. I made a mistake. <laughs> it's kind of a big mistake, though. Uh, Could have just played Coke Show Smash. Ooh. All right, all right. Find a way to flip Liliana here would be okay, I suppose. Oh, they're going to get so many lifelinkers. I don't know if I can win this race now. All right, they're just passing. Do still have a flyer, which is good with sword. I'm going to play as though they didn't just top deck another removal spell, but you never know. <sighs> Packrat, Graveyard Marshal. I don't think Graveyard Marshal is going to outrace him here. Packrat could do a good job. Of just getting in there. I think I play Packrat, discard, discard. 
Now I do still need to sort here. So we're going to do that. I'm probably going to send this cat in too. Keep the army limited if I can. Oh man, if they drew another removal spell and they have condemn, they get condemned back, that's pretty bad. For me. Not for them. Alright, so let's go Coca Show here. I don't think I want to attack with Liliana. Attack. Attack. Let's see what they drew. If they drew something interactive. Yeah, they just block a cat. I think that's fine for me. Going down to 13. They have to discard their card if it's not relevant. It's Misty Rainforest. They should have just played it instead of bluffing. I get to untap and go pack them a rat. And I can double pack rat here. Um, Yeah, I can double pack rat. Is there anything worth getting back from my graveyard? Like, Shriek Mall is just not going to do it here. They drew something. Miscalc. Oh, Cyclone Miscalc. Okay, cool. I mean, uses some of their mana, play land. Awesome. Still not at the position where I think they can be attacking with their cats. Alright, let's go ahead and make some pack rats here. I don't need swamps. Pack rat really good with uh, Phyrexian, whatchamacallit here. Arena. Probably going to Alpha Strike them. Damnation, Heroes Downfall. Don't think I'm at a point where I need a Damnation yet. But I do want to cast spells pre-combat if I can. So how many pack rats are we going to make? Probably make enough pack rats that they just have to... I'm going to discard... That might be wrong to discard Graveyard Marshal. Discard Damnation. Yeah, I think I just need to make so many pack rats that they just have to be blocking them. Now I'll probably attack with everything except Liliana. Might even get Liliana in there to be honest. They can kill any of these pack rats just fine without flipping Liliana, but if they kill the original pack rat then Liliana will transform. They can't kill the flyers currently. And I can also make a pack rat before damage because sword will untap me before damage. So if I feel like graveyard marshal is just worse than another pack rat, which it probably is at this point. Um, I can make one more pack rat, but I can do that mid combat. So I'm going to attack with everything except Liliana. This is super lethal. They only have to block two to survive, though. Alright. Don't mind that. Untap. They, do, they are dead on board to the Flyers if they don't attack with at least one of these next turn. So I'm going to keep my two cards in hand. Um, I'll keep the option to Volref Stronghold to Shriek Mall. We'll see. They have to attack with at least one cat this turn to not die to just straight up flyers. Alright, cool. Woo! Man, they got me. Massacre Worm is so good against that Johnny. Liliana is good against, like, Nimble Obstructionist. Good against enough of what we saw. Hex Mage kills a Johnny. Malicious Affliction is probably good against them. Chainer's Edict, probably a little bit worse. I mean, all my cards seem like okay against them, right? So I could easily cut, like, Coca Shell for Massacre Worm or cut Shieldred for Massacre Worm. And then, what else is not looking good here? Sword of Feast and Famine, we're going to swap for Fire and Ice. Although the untap in there was pretty good. But they do have blue cards, so this is relevant. 
him. They have Force of Will. We only saw two counter spells out of them, so we've got to assume they have a couple more. Read the Bones can probably come out. Uh, Hero's Downfall seems fine. All my cards just seem fine, which is <laughs> not a bad place to be. Damnation? I don't think I'm going to cut Damnation. I don't think I'm... I don't think I'm there yet. Malicious Affliction. Do I already have Doomblade? This is probably just better than Doomblade. Destroy target non-black creature. Destroy target non-black creature. But this has upside, and I'm in a deck that can cast double black just as easily as one in a black. Sure. I like keeping Heroes down following my opponent is blue-white, so they're bound to have, you know, a Jace or a Tamiyo floating around or something like that. And at the very worst, we already saw that they have a Johnny. Um, Sword of Fire and Ice, also way better against Kaiga than Sword of Feast and Famine. If we only have one creature and we kill Kaiga and it's equipped with Sword of Fire and Ice, they can't take our creature. I'll have to... <laughs> Sword of Fire and Ice also a lot better with Animate Dead than Sword of Feast and Famine, for what it's worth. Ooh, I did not think we were going to beat that Ajani Emblem, but I guess outdrawing them was better than out-tokening us. Uh, yeah, we're going to toss this away for sure. We're not into keeping one-landers with this deck. It's like all my favorite cards from the cube. Kokosho, Massacre Worm, Erebos. Heroes Downfall's fine. Freebooter's good. I'm 100% mulling, though, if the opponent gives us a chance. DJ Blindside 83. Come on, man. Come on, Kashath. Yeah, I'll mull. Uh, sure. Phyrexian Arena seems pretty good. Opponent also mulligant. Good for us. Oh, they went to five. All right, opponent's keeping on five. I'm keeping on six with a Phyrexian Arena, so I feel okay about it. And game ended, so hand was just too good. All right, I'll see you in match two, I guess. All right, we're back for round two after our opponent scooped round one against Hipx, or Hip X, I assume. Uh, him to Turarch is going to make me keep almost any hand. Shieldred looking kind of bad here, but we have Aetherborn, Heroes Downfall, so we have ways to interact with the board. We have him, which is good, against Red Black. Opponent did Mulligan as well, again, and they scribed to the bottom. Ooh, Freebooter also looking kind of good. Um, am I supposed to him before Freebooter? I think so. Oh no! No, they're gonna take our him, I assume. Yeah, I can't take creatures. Or they might take Hero's Downfall just because I can use it on the Freebooter. But I don't really want to... If they take him, I'll just play Freebooter, which is fine. Or maybe I play Gifted Aetherborn first. I don't know. The gig is up, though. Yeah, they take him. Alright, that's that's cool. Means that they want to protect... Oh, Sword and Feast and Fam against Black deck. Um, I'm going to play my Freebooter here. And we'll just get information about each other's hands here. Play with your hand face up. Damnation, Hypnotic Spectre, Mountain Swamp. Okay. These are all fine. I have a Hero's Downfall for the Hypnotic Spectre. Don't really want that thing hitting me. I'll probably Hero's Downfall it right away, to be honest. And we'll sit here and look at each other. They did not see the Sword of Feast and Famine, which is great. Um, yeah, we'll just do this now and pass. We'll just sit here looking at each other for a while, too. Boom, 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 boom. So we know nothing about their hand now. Just fresh cards off the top. I will happily Ravenous Chupacabra this Freebooter if I draw it. I would prefer to keep Sword of Feast and Famine for a turn where I can uh, play it, but him looks pretty good here if I can play it next turn. It incentivizes them to play out all their cards. Of course, if they kill my Freebooter, they get Damnation back, so i got to be a little bit careful about just jamming things into them. Alright, so now we know they have Damnation in hand. It's fine. Ooh, oh... So Damnation plus one other card. I think this is a great time to go Sword of Feast and Famine. Oh, actually, I should probably hem them. <laughs> I should just get Damnation out of their hand. What am I doing? Well, I played kind of poorly there. Oh, well. What was their other card? Jace, Architect of Thought. All right, well, they know about the sword. I probably would have played Gifted Aetherborn instead here, but I forgot I got him back. I can just take their last two cards. So they're top decking in a black deck against Sword of Feast and Famine, which is pretty good for me. They drew Baleful Strix, which is good. Draws him another card, but I can attack through Baleful Strix with Sword of Feast and Famine. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, geez, I hit F6 right before my turn came. That's so annoying. All right. Well, turn off auto yields for one. That's super annoying. Whatever. Um, they got a free pass on that one. Next turn, I can play Shieldred. Thassa. Interesting. I wonder if they're... they're no way they're Blue Devotion with the cards we've seen so far. Thassa does make things unblockable, though, and lets them scry every turn. Alright, so let's go... Let's go ahead and just cast Shieldred. Cast Shieldred. Um, would I trade Chupacabra? No, there's no reason to trade Chupacabra for Baleful Strix when they're going to have to sack it. So this should make 4 mana, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, I'll just keep the Swamp in my hand. They already know about the Shieldred, so they know it's going to happen. And that gets Freebooter back on my turn. Pretty bad situation for them to be in. They're going to need another Damnation type effect. Also Swamp Walk. <laughs> and my opponent has Swamps. Yeah, might have conceded there too. Alright, that turned out pretty nicely. Against another somewhat black deck, we got to consider our removal a little bit better. So like Doomblade looking worse. Um, Bone Shredder, non-artifact, non-black creature. Shriek Maw, non-black creature. Chupacabra can kill anything. Here's where... Oh, actually, I think Necrotal can't hit black creatures either. Sword of Feast and Famine looking good. Fire and Ice also looks good, too. They're red, blue, black, so... Might just bring in both swords. Uh, Downfall looks good. Animate Dead. Pack Rat. Aetherborn. Just making sure I don't have any of the non-black things or whatever. Uh, Duress is probably fine. Chainer's Edict's probably fine. Vampire Hexmage? Nah, I didn't see much for that. We saw a Jace, but we can kill a Jace. I like Gaunti here. Gaunti's good in the matchup, I think. Yeah, we'll go ahead and cut the things that only kill non-black creatures, bring in a couple more mid rangey type cards that are decent against the opponent, and hope that's good enough. Again, Stasa, Baleful Strix. Uh, this hand's not great, but I'll keep it. Opponent, Mulligan again. Mulligan and again. Alright, hip X, they scribe to the bottom. We don't have a particularly interactive hand. This might be the type of hand where, like, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm, I'm kind of considering doing it. Discarding the hand size, pitch Shieldred, and then animate d dead Shieldred in two turns, but I still think I'm just going to play, like, Graveyard Marshal and so on. If I had drawn just, like, another Swamp, I would highly consider just passing my turn and discarding Shieldred so I can animate dead it. Ooh, I do like Nightville Spectre here. I'll go ahead and run into a counterspell if my opponent has it. And if they don't, get a 3-2 on board. Which don't really have too much care for. And it is good with Nykthos, so go Nightville Spectre into Nykthos into Shieldred, I believe, is a thing I can do. I'm not going to not attack here for any particular reason. And they're going to kill my guy. Okay, they're going to dismember my guy. I'm okay with it. I'd rather them dismember the 3-2 than the thing that gives me cards off the top of my opponent's library when it hits them. And I can Chupacabra a blocker here if they play one. Choops. Oh, can't Chupacabra that. They're going to shrink? Oh, um, I don't really want them to have Bitter Blossom, to be honest. So, they need two lands, they can take it. Uh, they took the Bitter Blossom. Alright, so probably just kill Jace while I can. Hmm, Phyrexian Arena versus Bitter Blossom, huh? Uh, if they have him, I want to probably get this Swamp out of my hand. Bitter Blossom is going to be hard to beat. I think I'm supposed to just kill Jace and just pass up the card here. Yeah, I'll kill Jace. And then play Phyrexian Arena. I think two cards per turn should be able to beat a Bitter Blossom. Plus, Bitter Blossom isn't going to give them a token right away anyway. Yeah. Should probably play Nykthos here in case they do have like him to Turok or some um, Mind Twist type effect. I want Nykthos for the long game, but here comes Bitter Blossom. And they're just passing. Ooh, Sword of Feast and Famine is so good. Do I go for it? Uh, if, I, if I can resolve Sword of Feast and Famine, 
and attack, I get to just reuse all my mana, so I might as well, right? That's five mana by itself. I'm going to go ahead and equip with the other two, get my attack in. Sword and Feast and Famine was insane because it gets me around Bitter Blossom. Plus, Obliterator is good against Bitter Blossom. Kind of hoping I hit Damnation off the top just so I know my opponent doesn't have Damnation in hand. All right, they discard Swamp. Night Veil Spectre hits Hour of Devastation. Okay, well, I'm not casting that. And then probably only going to play out one thing here. Shieldred doesn't look good. I'll play Obliterator. Because it makes my Devotion insane next turn. And they can't really thump Obliterator with Bitter Blossom tokens without losing a permanent. So I would say they are in a fair amount of trouble if they don't have a Damnation right now. And then even if they do, I just ever need to resolve a creature and put Sword out, I have Shieldred. Which I can't actually cast if I lose my creatures, though. I can animate dead like Obliterator or Night Veil Spectre. We'll see. We'll see if their last three cards can uh, get them into this game here. Oh, and Obliterator tramples. Mm. Obliterator, but hard to leave in nowhere. Alright, draw two cards. Nice. Gonti's good here. Um, Play Swamp. Play Gonti pre-combat in case I hit a No, I can't tap like that, can I? Dang, I have a lot of mana. In case I hit a counter spell or something, Gonti's pretty good here. I think I'm just going to attack. Give up a lot of value on casting things pre-combat, but opponent has a plan, I'm sure. They can't block this. They get trampled and pack a permanent if they block this. Otherwise, they take nine. God, that's so gross. All right, sack a permanent. They're going to, I assume they have to sack a land, sack Bitter Blossom. They're going to Fatal Push Obliterator. It's okay. Don't care. Just probably play Shieldred. And then they discard Watery Grave. So their hand is empty. We hit Mizium Mortars. This opponent's so dead. Um... That's five. Kind of just want to play Gonti. Just get a look at my opponent's deck before we win. Uh, no, let's just get Shieldred down. Let's just because Shieldred wins against them next turn. Swamp Walk, Sword of Feast and Famine. There's nothing they can do about it. They have to top deck real well. In fact, they go down to six, so I don't even need to put the sword on this. It's just lethal. <coughs> yeah. All right. Um, turns out Mono Black good against other Black decks if you put it in right, man. Uh, kind of crushed them there. Let's see if we can do that one more time in round three. I'm the die roll this time against TGO. See if we are playing against yet another blue deck. Man, Frexia Arena's been great, so I don't see any reason to throw this hand back. Not great against Mono Red, but Damnation sweeps the board. Liliana has Lifelink. Frexia Arena is double-edged sword against Mono Red or Mono White or any aggressive deck for that matter, but you run into blue decks way more often than you run into uh, the mono red or mono white decks. I like our deck, though. I think it's really solid. Opponent's mulligan, too. I guess that helps if every single one of your opponent's mulligans down to five. And they keep... Keeping on five against Frexian Arena is not good. Uh, to the bottom. It's not like we have a hand that really punishes them, but if we drew, like, him to Turok, even... I don't know, um... Oh, Damnation's great against these decks. Against Mono Green, or Green Ramp, I should say. Be any combination of green. Blue Green. That's the upheaval deck. I'm on to you. I know what you got. Hope they just play out their hand, Damnation, and then build from there. I want to see Creatures Ramp, not Infant Sorcery Ramp. Oh, never mind. We don't know what we're playing against. Are they going to jam for one? 
All right, what do I play here? I probably just play for X and Arena, right? Especially if I plan on Damnation, or if Damnation's even going to be a game plan, I don't want to play a creature out into Damnation. So yeah, I'll play Arena. Give them an opportunity to play more creatures here. Get my draw engine going. If they don't play more creatures out, I'll probably just play Night Veil Spectre. Come on, play like two creatures here. Play Sylvan Carry Added. Um, what else do we want them to play? Baleful. No, don't play Baleful Strix. Play uh, Tide Hall of Strix. There you go. That's not in the cube. I, <laughs> I highly doubt Tide Hall of Strix is in the cube. All right, tapping out for a five drop. Ugh, Nixless. All right, that's a thing that I can't just blow up. Hero's Downfall. Oh, they had to play a Planeswalker. Hmm. Changes things a little bit. Doomblade. Good against this thing, I suppose. Um, yeah, Damnation looking really poor now. Oh, they can just blow this up, too. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It's going to be a struggle to get through, I think. See, if I play Night Vale Spectre, they minus three, then they're not plus, and I think that's fine. Next turn, I can go, like, Liliana plus Doomblade or something like that. Do need to find Hero's Downfall for Obnixilis. I don't actually have a lot of ways to kill a uh, Planeswalker just straight up. Don't have a lot of hasty creatures or anything like that. Hoping two cards a turn can get me there, but I assume they go minus three, and then the problem is they can just minus three again, kill another creature. Although, if they minus three again, that kills Obnixilis. I don't mind them just killing two of my creatures here. Because Arena, hopefully, draws me into stuff. Doomblade can take care of most creatures they play. Although, if they play black creatures, I could be in trouble. It'd be an uphill struggle against Obnixilis. They minus three right away. Opponent's mold of five looking pretty good here. Wumbering Falls. And Jammin. Okay. Arena draws into Kokosho. Animate Dead. I like that. Gonna have to play, I think, Liliana. I could play Liliana plus Anime Dead, get back Night Vale Spectre. That doesn't seem bad. Anime Dead is a lot better on, like, Coca Show, but should I Doomblade this thing? I think it might be better to just Doomblade their elves. But I'll hold that up at instant speed here. Alright, they're gonna draw with Up Nicholas. Not interested in killing Liliana, which means they probably have a blocker for it. Gonna play something big this turn. Seven mana, Mer Battle Sphere. All right, that does die to Doomblade, but do I want to Damnation it instead? That is the question. And then I can animate Dead it. Hmm. That seems like it could be a good way around Obnixilis. So I'm gonna save my Doomblade. I think I'm gonna go Damnation plus Animate Dead Battle Sphere next turn. Of course, I'll attack first. Uh, Shriek Maul? Doesn't kill artifacts, right? All right. All right, let's go ahead and attack Obnicholas. They want to block with, like, three Mur. I'm kind of happy with that. They might just not block at all, either. And I guess they need Force of Will to stop this. They could have Force of Will, but it's less likely in a three-color deck. Wow, that is risky block. I'm okay with it, though. Let's go ahead and Damnation, and then... I will reanimate your battle sphere that way if they kill the animate dead or they kill the battle sphere I've still got the 411 here. I feel like we're in a fine position against them. Assume they minus on battle sphere but they might just plus if they have a, like a damnation of their own. They did plus, they drew a card. Got to assume they can at least kill battle sphere. 6 mana. Bells and Lock, Reveal Entireless Tracker. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, I can Chupacabra it. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Um, so, I'm kind of tempted to go Chupacabra, kill Bells and Lock, attack, I guess Battle Sphere has to go at Obnixilis, uh, player or Planeswalker. Okay, so we know we're gonna Chupacabra Bells and Lock. And so let's go ahead and do that. 
And then I think I have to send... It doesn't matter if I attack with the Merv or I tap him to Battle Sphere, so... Actually, does it? I attack them for three. I put four here. No, I need to send two at this. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to send Battle Sphere and Tumor at Obnixilis. Could play around like Slaughter Pact here. These will go ahead and attack him. No. So that clears all of my opponent's threats. And then I get to play Mindbender. Five. And how much does Nykthos make right now? Five? Yeah, I'll just sack Ch Chupacabra here. Cast. Sack. Cost four less. All right, whatever. There we go. And let's take a peek at what they have. Wall of Blossoms, Tireless Tracker, two forests. All right, let's get Tireless Tracker out of here. And they don't have anything for or above. So they're on Wall of Blossoms, Double Forest, and the top card of their library against Mer Battle Sphere and a 5 5. They're, I assume this is Wall. Yep, give them a second draw phase. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about this. <laughs> I was feeling kind of uneasy there for a second. Now I'm feeling pretty great. Playing Sultai. No counter spells out of them, though. Bells and Lock. Bells and Lock is one of those creatures that, like, it's obviously very good, but it's just super replaceable. The cards are efficient enough in this format that, like, your big 5-mana, 6-mana, 7-mana creatures just end up dying if they don't do something right away. This one does, though. I mean, it drew you, like, Tireless Tracker. But that's why when I see cards like Lyra, Dawnbreaker, Baneslayer, Angel, these big, like, 5-6-mana Angel-type creatures, I don't really even consider them. Because the removal spells are just like Shriek Maul, Doom Blade. You're paying 5 mana, your opponent's paying 2 mana, they're going to out-tempo you very hard if you keep doing that. They have Lumber and Falls as a blocker here. Which is notable. And they haven't conceded yet, so... And I don't think they've played a land yet, so they still have Double Forest in their hand. Double Forest plus 2 fresh draws. Draw for turn plus draw off Wall of Blossoms. TGO. I might pause the video if they take too much longer here, but uh, yeah. I guess this is another matchup where like, I probably still keep like the Doomblade in, or the Mo Did I main deck Doomblade and cut Malicious Affliction? I might have done that. The Malicious Affliction should be main boarded over Doomblade at the very least, and a mono black deck is just strictly better. So that was a dumb oversight that I'm just now realizing. All right, let's see what they got. Jace the Mind Sculptor could bounce Mer Battle Sphere back to their hand. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, land, land, not very good. Probably gonna play Coca Show. So their hand is Battle Sphere, Forest, and One Unknown. Um, if I Cast Shriek Maul. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So they have to use a majority of their mana to just cast Battle Sphere, and I can Doomblade that. So if I can get them down to 5 this turn, then Kokosho just kills them in the air, right? Um, right now, I don't have that much devotion. I lost the Animate Dead. So I think... I do want to kill Jace as well. So I think I'm actually going to Doomblade this. Play Kokosho. Uh, attack two of these at Jace, and then that's five, six, seven. That puts him at five exactly. Yeah, that works. So let's go ahead and just Doomblade this boy, girl. You know, you never know with walls. You never know with blossoms. Uh, attack Jace for two. Attack the rest at Tigo. You could kill Jace and put him at five, and then I'll cast Kokosho. Assuming they don't have interaction. And then we'll drop Kokosha. We'll fight against a Mer Battle Sphere here. So now they either have to <laughs> get rid of Kokosha without killing it, or find a flying blocker. I have two lethal threats here. So if they just tap out for Mer Battle Sphere, they don't have anything else, they die to Kokosha. 
If they have a removal spell for Kokusho, they die to Kokusho. So they're going to need something that locks Kokusho down and also blocks Distended Mindbender, which they could have. We know they have a Forest, Battle Sphere, and two other cards, so those two other cards are going to have to be good here in order for them to not die. We have Shriek Maw to take out, like, a Flying Blocker, too, which is good, assuming it's not a big black Flying Blocker. They could easily have, like, a Control Magic effect or something like that, too. Also, we get the two fresh draws from Phyrexian Arena. Alright, this does not look like a Battle Sphere to me. Obstinate Bailoth, that gains them four life, that's something. Alright. I'll uh, keep that in mind. They have Obstinate Bailoth against our discard. Hmm. <laughs> Double Swamp. Uh, pro cast Obstinate Bailoth. Or, I'm sorry, cast Shriek Maw. Just kill this right now. I'm glad they showed us that. They probably had a plan there if we didn't have a way to kill this. Like, they block 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Maybe they have the way to kill a Murr or something like that. Um... But now that we know about that, it's worth <laughs> worth keeping in mind with our discard. So, like, him to Turok looks a little bit worse when they have that. Um, as does Liliana Heretical here, although that's not flipping any time ever anyway, so. Uh, first things first, Doomblade come out for, whatchamacallit, Malicious Affliction. Vampire Hexmage looks really good in this matchup. Shriek Maul looks just okay, but not great. Bone Shredder can come out. Oh, Bone Shredder's not in. <laughs> so Bone Shredder's already out. Gonti looks good. Chainer's Edict looks alright. Duress looks pretty good. Sword of Fire, nice. They are playing blue. But they have mostly green creatures. When did I pick up an Underground Sea? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um... I think I'm going to pass on Fire and Ice, just keep Feast and Famine. Alright, what are we cutting here? So, I'm tempted to cut him to Turok because of Obstinate Bailoth. Distended Mindbender, you choose a card with Converted Man, costs 3 or less, 4 or greater. I think they have enough. This isn't optional, so if Obstinate Bailoth the only target for it, then Mindbender has to take that card. Oh, I guess this is random too. I think him is good enough. If it hits an Obstinate Bailoth, then whatever. Like... Forget about it. Um, Animate Dead seems good against them. All my cards seem okay. I guess Liliana Heretical here, Healer can come out. And then... Everything else seems solid. Shriek Maul might be a cut here. It doesn't kill more Battle Sphere. It doesn't kill any black creatures. Yeah. Alright. Let's go ahead and run it back. I feel pretty good about this matchup. We got a Swamp Walker. There's Phyrexian Arena on turn 3 again. Hope they don't have a fast draw, though. They're mulling again. Jeez. I'm going to keep... Alright, they're keeping at 6 this time. They kept at 5 last time and made a game out of it, so... No turn 1 Mana Dork is nice. No turn 1 or two turn 2 play from us, which is not nice. Noble Hierarch. They probably just drew that, I assume. Alright, Read the Bones is fine. I wish I had a Doom Blade for this Noble Hierarch. I'll just snap it off here. They play, like, Ace the Mind Sculptor or something this turn, then... In a little bit of trouble. Alright, Obstinate Bailoth, I guess, means I'm not getting hit by that. Or it's not getting discarded. Um, what's more important, Arena or Read the Bones here? Probably gonna take a lot of damage. Read the Bones digs me four cards deep. Find a Ravenous Chupacabra or something like that. Yeah, I'll play Read the Bones, I suppose. I would like to find a removal spell Animate Dead. I think I'm going to keep that, but I'm going to bottom this Swamp. Because if I can find a way to kill Obstinate Bayloth, or I could just discard a card here. I'm going to discard a Swamp, though. Um, I wish I had, like, Shieldred in hand there, then I could have discarded it. Probably should have dug one more deep. I'm going to take 5 minimum down to 13. Oh no! Alright, well that's GG against us, I think. I think I can actually just concede this game. <laughs> Ugh, they would have Sword of Feast and Famine! Alright, Doomblade coming back in. 
Let's see what we draw. If we draw Damnation, we might be fine. Coca Show. All right, give it one more turn here. Gonna take seven. Eight, down to three. Yeah, if we find uh, Damnation, sweep the board, and then animate dead Obstinate Bayloth, we could be fine, but Sword of Feast and Famine's gonna kill us. Any creature at all, and we're just... We can't interact with that. Discard, uh... I suppose Graveyard Marshal. Doesn't matter. I guess Kokosho, but I don't know. None of these things matter. Alright, draw two cards. Draw some messenger. Alright, game over. Sword of Feast and Famine, good against black decks. Right? Right? It's like that thing I said, sleight of hand. Massacre Worm's probably good against them. Alright, Doomblade coming back in. So you can Doomblade. I, I kind of like Duress here too now. <laughs> um, I cannot afford to let them resolve a Sword of Feast and Famine. I have no way to get rid of it once it hits the board. I think Read the Bone's going to come out. If I just draw uh, Phyrexian Arena every time anyway. And then Graveyard Marshal has been subpar, I think. We really need to just kill their mana dorks as soon as they play them. Chainer's Edict could even be good here. Chainer's Edict is a way to kill a creature that has Witch McCallit on it. Shriek Maul. I mean, all this stuff looks a little bit better now that we know. I don't know what we know now, but now that we know it. All right, Graveyard Marshal can come out. Maybe I don't need to rest. Maybe that's pushing it. They are primarily a creature deck, but you have Rampant Growth, Planeswalkers, stuff like that. Him. I guess if I'm bringing in to rest, I can afford to cut him. Him's so good. I just don't want to get Obstinate Bayloft. All of my cards seem fine. I'm on, I'm on the play, too. Vampire Hexmage kills their Planeswalkers straight up. All right, let's leave Shriek Maul out. Let's bring in Doomblade so we can leave Shriek Maul out. Doomblade's a little bit better here because if they go to, like, equip a sword, I can kill their creature in response with Doomblade. And then Gifted Aetherborn? Seems fine. Uh, what's just not good against them? It's gotta be something here that's just not great, right? Shieldred. Shieldred seems good. Freebooter, Pack Rat. Just gonna cut, like, a random card. Chainer's Edict might be bad. It's probably good against Mana Dorks, though. Alright, if I'm bringing in Chainer's Edict, do I need Malicious Affliction and Doomblade? No. I think the right cut here is to just keep two or three effects that kill things. I have Damnation as well, so that's another out. But we just don't have a way to kill an artifact once it hits the board. Alright, this looks like a decent hand, but it's slow against a hand that might have Mana Dork into... You know, Mana Dork into Sword into Attack on turn 3 and we're just dead. Especially since we're not playing anything till turn 3. Aeropost looks fine. Opponent Mold for the third game in a row. But they're on the draw this time. They are on the draw. They scribe to the bottom. We're going to go Swamp Pass for a couple turns. Please draw him. Please draw him to Turok. Him, Duress, um, Kite Tail Freebooter, these are all cards I'd be very happy to draw right now. No turn one mana, Dork, I like it. No turn two anything, I don't like it. Alright, let's see the mana, Dork. Let's see something off the top here. Night Veil Spectre is fine, of course, but... Ooh, what if I Night Veil Spectre and hit there, whatchamacallit? Ooh, Preordain? Okay. That could hit a mana, Dork. They're looking for a one mana spell, presumably. They scry both cards to the bottom and draw. Oh, they did hit one mana dork. Alright, I was going to say, if I find a way to kill that, I'll play it right now, but we're going to have to settle for Night Veil Spectre. Could play Distended Mindbender next turn, depending on what they play here. They're in 4-drop territory, but I might go Erebos into Mindbender or something like that. Mindbender actually lowers my, uh, whatchamacallit. Alright, Architect of Thought. They're going to minus 2, I assume. You can have these two. I don't really care much for the Noxious Gear Hulk. Assume they're going to take Gear Hulk. Nope, they took Island Noble. Alright, Nykthos is good. 
Yeah, Nykthos is solid. So we're going to go kill Jace just to get that off board rather than take a card off the top of their library. Wait a second. Oh, they go to the bottom. I thought they pitched to the graveyard. So it's not like fact or fiction at all. Been lied to. Extended Mindbender can take that Noble Hierarch out of their hand. But I'm going to go Erebos, and then next turn, um, if my creatures are alive, I can go Nykthos into Kokosho and attack with both of these. Erebos is pretty big game. Can also draw me cards if things go awry. And for some reason, I didn't draw Phyrexian Arena this game. I guess you can't have it literally every game. We have possible. Well, we know they have a land. All right, I don't mind them starting their hand with sleight of hand, starting their play, their turn, their whatever, with sleight of hand. It gives them some mana to work around with, but at least they can't like drop an Obnixilus or something like that this turn. And we know they have what noble forest, noble land. They have the noblest of lands in their hand. They are on seven cards. We're on four. Mindbenders should be a good two for one at some point. Navineral's Disc. Huh. Doesn't kill Erebos, though. I think I'm still going to play Kokosho. And attack them for seven. If they want to pop Disc, they kill their own Elves. I think I'm okay with this. The problem with playing Kokosho here is if they do Disc... I don't have a follow-up play. Um, Nykthos adds 4, 5, 6, so I can only get up to 6 mana. I could just draw 3 cards, but I think I'm supposed to get in with Erebos this turn. They take 7, plus if Kokosho dies, they take another 5, so... I don't hate this. I can always draw with Erebos, if nothing else. This is a big hit. 7 plus 5, that'll put them down to 5 if they disc, which they'll disc on my turn. If they just pass and don't do anything, they're going to disc on my turn. I can just use my mana to draw cards. Plus, Erebos won't even die. This hits a land, I think I can just play it, right? Tassiger. Well, I can't cast that. Keep in mind, if Night Vale Spectre does die, that um I can't play the cards that were exiled with Night Vale Spectre. It's not like Gaunti. Alright, oh, I guess they'll go down to 6. Yeah, I lose my devotion here if Night Vale Spectre dies, so Nykthos won't tap for any extra mana. I suppose what I could do... Yeah, I'm, I mean, I imagine what's going to happen here is they're going to pass the turn, let me attack, and then disc. Though, they're putting stuff on the board? No, they've got to be casting spells here. Oh no, they disc on their turn. Get, what? Get out of here, Jace. <laughs> Why is Jace all up in my business like that? Why would you disc on your turn? Hmm. Ewit back. Disc? Jace? Elves? Ewit back. Preordained? Okay. I guess they're digging for something. Let's see what they do with their preordain. Oh, if I draw Phyrexian Obliterator, I can attack with Erebos. <laughs> Phyrexian Obliterator off the top. Let's do it. They uh, scried one to the top, one to the bottom. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Can't cast Shieldred. Can't cast Mindbender. I could cast Mindbender if I want to pitch Erebos here, but I don't think that's right. So I'm going to draw a couple cards. Hopefully find something to play. I did just gain 5 life, so I've got a little bit of extra mana floating around. Alright, I will go ahead and hold here. Well, this Affliction seems fine. It doesn't actually work against either of their man lands. This one has Hexproof, this one's black. Alright. Alright, they go for the equip, I get to Malicious Affliction it. Hopefully they don't have a 1 man, like a Spell Pierce or something. That's a pretty big game against them. Also, I'm pretty sure Mindbender can block a creature with Sword of Feast and Famine on it. Ooh. All right, Shieldred's going to make them lose Noble Hierarch. We're getting there, guys. We're close. 
Shoulder just lethal on them too if they don't do anything. Next turn I can hard cast Distended Mindbender. Alright, they have to sack Noble Hierarch. Oh, I guess they could activate a Man Land in response and sack that instead. They do have enough mana to go activate Tar Pit plus equip Tar Pit. Get in a hit for 5 and untap everything. Which is pretty good. I guess if... Yeah, Tar Pit's just better than... Which I'm call it, but they still need to find an answer to Shieldred, which means the four cards in their hand are going to have to do it. Um, Damnation's pretty bad against these man lands, so if they do hit me with Sword of Feast and Famine, I'm probably going to discard Damnation, hard cast Distended Mindbender, and hope that I just get in with Shieldred. If they kill Shieldred, then I could be in a little bit of trouble. Like, if they attack me, untap, kill Shieldred, then I'm in trouble. Um, if they let me untap with Shieldred, I get back Kokosho, and then I can just Damnation Kokosho, or I could sack Kokosho to, a uh, Distended Mindbender, which does make, like, Animate Dead a good draw here, too. Animate Dead Kokosho, sack it to Mindbender, and then they take 5 from Kokosho's ability. Okay, they're not Animate in Tar Pit, okay. They could be Animate in Lumber and Falls here. That seems worse than just Tar Pit. I guess it's hexproof, so that makes sense if I have, like, Slaughter Pact or something like that. So equip, do all the thing, yeah. You got it. This doesn't draw them extra cards, and they only have three cards in hand. Puts me down to 16, so I'm still at a decent life total. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Probably discard Damnation. I can even Volraf Stronghold Kokosho back to the top of my library. Can't block this. Gonna have to see what their combination of cards in their hand are. Discard Damnation? Yeah, I'll discard Damnation. Let's see what they can muster up here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. They have to kill Shieldred. It has Swamp Walk. Or they have to bounce their own Swamp or something like that. They don't necessarily have to kill Erebos here. Keep in mind, I can... Oh, no, never mind. I said earlier that you can sack Erebos to uh, Distended Mindbender. That's not true. You could do that with the new gods like Bontu and Hazret and stuff because they're creatures at all time, but Erebos stops being a creature if you don't have the Devotion, so you can't actually sack it to Mindbender unless you already have the Devotion to Black. So I miss uh, misspoke when I said that. Let's see what TGO's got. Three cards in hand. Bring it on. At the very least, if they have nothing, this was a free hit for them. All right, they're doing something. They're playing Recurring Nightmare. What can they get back with that? Eternal Witness. Okay, so... Sack and Lumber falls to get back Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness is going to get back what? It's probably going to get back, like, Preordain. Yeah, they're going to go dig in here. So they're going to Preordain with three mana left over. And they have already played away in this turn. If they top anything, I assume they find an answer. If they bottom bottom, then I assume we've got the game. Granted, that third card could be something. So, let's see. Bottom bottom. So, one of the cards in their hand is Recurring Nightmare. And we got it. Nice. Mono Black took it away with no Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Get at me. Those were fun games. I love playing Mono Black. It's awesome. So I hope they were as fun for you to watch as they were for me to play. And uh, just go ahead and timestamp this video. We've got exactly one week and two days until Ravnica comes out. Guilds of Ravnica, which is looking pretty excited. I'll probably do a goodbye M19 draft just to kind of seal that away and uh, um, say my thoughts and prayers to uh, M19 and wish it a happy afterlife in the uh, dredges of corsets. But anyway... Uh, might even do another legacy draft or not or do some arena but yeah we managed to take down a legacy cube draft which is always fun hope you enjoyed it i'll go ahead and quit rambling make sure you like comment and subscribe um welcome to any of the new subscribers in the last week or so appreciate you being here appreciate you spending your time with me that's going to do it for us today my name is timothy with manorox thanks for watching and i'll see